AI, if you're into industrial automation and electrical design engineering, then you've come to the best possible place. My name is Ivan and first, excuse the glasses. I really do not want to reveal my identity to the whole world. So I have been designing industrial automation systems for the last nine years. And across industries, on the one hand, automotive industry, so car body manufacturing and industrial paint shops for clients such as Volkswagen and Daimler. On the other hand, in the process industry, so oil and gas, food and beverages, chemical, pharmaceutical and so on. So I've gained over the years a lot of knowledge from different industries in the electrical design engineering. This course is going to have two main parts. So in the first part of the course, we are going to learn about this project you see in the background. So I'm going to explain how I started to work on this project, what were the key requirements from the customer, and also how I managed the dimension, the power system, how I managed the dimension, the climate control system for these enclosures, and also about the software where I created all the circuit diagrams. So this is a typical example of a more complex industrial automation system from the process industry it's a refrigeration system consisting of three main segments the first segment i would say would be compressors in this case we had two screw type compressors the first one was 160 kilowatts and the second one 132 kilowatts the second segment was the technology and we had about 100 kilowatts of various consumers and the third segment is of course the control system with the corresponding cabinet as mentioned as a first part of the course we're going to learn about this project and then in the second part of the course I'm going to present all the software I used to be able to successfully finish this project. So the first software which I used to dimension the power system, so the protection devices, the cables and everything. The second software I used to determine the heat loss parameter since we had about 400 kilowatts in these cabinets, so the heat loss and the overheating of the cabinets, the possible overheating of the cabinets was a big issue. So I had to be careful and make sure to dimension the climate control system. In this case, the fans the proper way. And then the next lecture is going to be about a software I used to create all the circuit diagrams. So this course is going to be a nice insight into the world of electrical design engineering with focus on real life application. I hope you like what you see over here and I invite you to enroll. And now let's join our forces, my knowledge and your readiness to learn and let's master electrical design engineering for industrial applications. So now let me talk about this project a little bit. I'm going to explain what further skills required for me to be able to design this whole system completely on my own. And also the software I used. And then in the next videos I'm going to present those softwares to you. And then you can decide for yourself if those software are worth investing time to learn more about them and how to use them properly. So this was a project in the process industry, industrial refrigeration system. So we had two parts of the system or better to say three parts. 
we had two compressors screw type compressors 160 kilowatts and 132 kilowatts you can see the soft starters let me just so these are the soft starters we used to drive those motors of the compressors so that was all together in these cabinets we had about 700 ampere so those two 160 kilowatts 132 kilowatts and then in this cabinet around 100 kilowatts of all the other consumers so the fans the pumps the mixers and everything else that was necessary for this technology to work So the first part, the compressors, the second part, the technology, so the cooling system and the third part is a control system. Let me just find the PLC cabinet. This was during the commissioning, so it's a little bit messy over here. Still have the instruments and everything, but this is now commissioned and everything is okay. So this was our PLC cabinet. The PLC we used is Siemens S7-1500. I normally work on projects for customers in Europe and Siemens is a big player over here so we mostly use Siemens PLC. This was a freestanding enclosure PLC cabinet and then over here this was the power distribution cabinet so the source starters in this first cabinet then the main power distribution system and then on the other side all the other consumers so about 100 kilowatts so how this project started my colleague contacted me and if I was available for this project, for of course I had the time. And then we had a meeting with the customer and they gave us the input for me, for the electrical design engineer. So it was a PDF document. It was a, that's a nice document to start with. A document that enlisted all the power consumers all the sensors, all the measurements, all the devices we're going to use in the, on this project. And that was definitely very valuable document for me. From this document on, I could design the whole system. We had a special requirement, so they wanted to have the possibility to control the whole technology also in hand mode so automatic via a plc and also to drive some motors in hand mode that's why you have so many push buttons and lamps over here and it's a little bit crowded they get my guys from the panel builder they could mount the push buttons and lamps a little bit with the distance between them but it is as it is the system works perfectly, so we can live with that. Also the customer, which is very important, of course. A special requirement, hand mode and automatic mode. And this PDF document with all the power consumers and all the control equipment. And from this point on, I could design this whole system completely on my own. I got all the part numbers, all the data from the manufacturer, so that, that was great. We had to, of course, dimension the soft starters accordingly for the for driving of the compressors. I also had to dimension the power distribution system. So as I said, we had about 400 kilowatts of the power consumption. And for that matter, we had to dimension the power supply cable and also 
the bars power system. As you can see over here, it's 60 mm bus bar system, and we are driving about 700 appears through these bus bars. And this is completely possible because we used central in feed system, so we had about 300 kilowatts in these cabinets and 100 over there. So the current is splitting to this side and to this side, and that's why. On the bus bars inside you don't get the maximum value of the current that the bus bar can carry in this case it was a 30 times 10 millimeters bus bars and they could carry normally about 630 amperes but as i said it wasn't an issue because the current is splitted in this point and only the main bus bar, the infeed bus bars had to be a little bit thicker, so 50 times 10 millimeters. So the first thing I had to do is to dimension the power distribution system. To do that, I used software called Simaris Design. I'm gonna talk about this software in the next video. I also used software from all the other manufacturers, like from ABB, Eaton, Schneider Electric, this one is for Siemens that I used, Simaris Design, and it's according to my opinion, by far the best one out there on the market. Of course, there are some more complex software you could use to analyze your power distribution system, but since I only had to dimension the protection devices and the cables, this kind of software was more than enough for me. And it's also completely free of charge, so that's also something to take into consideration. Another big, big issue on this project was heat dissipation inside the cabinets, especially in this one, since these two, two soft starters from Danfoss, for their nominal current they can deliver, they shouldn't be operating at more than 40 degrees Celsius. So we had to make sure that they temperature inside this cabinet doesn't go over 40 degrees Celsius and since we commissioned this system in the summer so the worst possible scenario we also immediately got the proof that our climate control system for this cabinet is working properly so it's properly dimensioned so to I mentioned the climate control system for a cabinet. I use the software called Rital Therm. It's also a free of charge software from Rital. And I also have some customers like Volkswagen that even demand that I do the heat dissipation calculations in this software and then, then, then I hand over the report of the calculation as an integral part of the project documentation when working on projects for Volkswagen. As I said that was a big issue so for this cabinet also we had to make sure for this one since we have a lot of bus bars and the main circuit breaker and also for this cabinet since we have a lot of consumers over here also the frequency converters and over here all small saw starters those were 11 kilowatts altogether we ended up having a lot of fans so we were able to avoid installing air conditioning system which is pretty much expensive and it was definitely as we've seen during the commissioning this was a completely acceptable solution so to go only with fans now the third thing when i dimension the power distribution system and when i generally 
Of course, I first created the circle diagrams, then I conducted these heat dissipation calculations and the software I use to create circuit diagrams is called Deep Planet Electric P8. I worked in this software since 2010 when I started to work as an electrical design engineer and of course there are a lot of other solutions on the market and also dedicated solutions when you work in some industries like in the process industry you have also some software that combine the creation of piping instrumentation diagram with the instrument loops with the data sheets with everything but for now across industries anywhere I worked there was a lot of demand for this software of course I'm gonna also talk about this software in one of the lectures to show you the key features and the benefits of using this software in particular to be honest I never tried any other software because I just didn't need to most of my customers demand the knowledge of Ripple Electric P8 on the other hand it would be helpful for you to learn the basics of AutoCAD to draw layouts for example for the cables for the cable trays for the grounding system so those kind of layouts sum it up regarding software so i use simari design for the power calculations i use vital therm for the heat dissipation calculations also called heat loss heat load power loss and at the end Eplan Electric P8 to create circle diagrams. I also worked a lot for years in AutoCAD but never to create circle diagrams only for the layouts for those kind of drawings. That's about it for this video. In the next video I'm gonna present the key features of Simari design and the things this free of charge software from Siemens can do for you. Now as promised, let me shortly explain why I just love this software. Not only because it's free of charge, but it's also a complete software and very useful. And at the end of the day, you don't even have to have a Siemens logo on your output documentation, which is a nice thing if you do not work with Siemens, but with other manufacturer and you do have to dimension the, the protection devices and the cables. So the thing you like about this software, so project definition, you have a lot of languages available. You can download the software from the Siemens website these are the countries I installed for the standard regional settings you have I don't know 30 50 countries available and also the languages if you choose for example Russia then you also get the workspace the output documentation and everything in Russian if you work in Russia with projects, you need to have your output documentation in Russian. Simaris will help you. Let's cancel. Now, you can also work with different voltages. These are the standard voltages on the medium side. You can also type any kind of input you need. Also on the low voltage side, the same thing with some options. This is the data you will get in your plot frame. When you're done with this section, the project definition, then you go to your network design 
you just drag and drop all the things you need starting from the infeed and the distribution boards and then the file circuits you even have a charging unit for your electrical car if you own a tesla let's dimension the power distribution the cables and everything for tesla charging unit when you're done with your network design with your single line diagram you can also additionally and this is similaris curves you can select a circuit and then this is a fuse let's select a circuit breaker so the settings for the components of the circuit breaker the thermal release for example this case and then the magnetic you can adjust the curves as you can see over here time and the current to adjust the selectivity between the circuits so simaris design and then simaris curves is a separate software but when you install those two and when you open simaris design you'll have also this option to open simaris curves as an integral part of the simaris design when you're done with your single line diagram and with the selectivity with the settings and everything you can either of course let simaris design choose for you the selectivity and everything based on your settings or you could do it manually and then lock it over here it's up to you then you go to the project output and one more thing to mention over here if you do not want to work with this CMR design plot frame of course you can change the size the paper size and also you can define the page format and you can go to tools settings and then the drawing border so this is the CMR design plot frame let's say we use a2 for this single line diagram you could browse and choose a dxf file so you can immediately start to work in your plot frame to create your own single line diagrams and to have everything dimensioned automatically either automatically or you can lock some of the things you want to for example dimension manually let's say over here automatic dimensioning you can turn that off so it's locked now okay and this means we locked this one so when we start to dimension all the circuits or only select the circuits or the sub network Simaris design is not going to dimension this line it's going to omit this line because you decided to dimension this cable in this case or a circuit breaker if you want completely manually now we are done with the single line diagram let's go to project output so you can output a lot of so every basically everything you created graphically over here and also the background information the properties of various devices of the cables or everything you can export that the project documentation is going to be exported to word document then the various lists are going to be exported to excel and then selectivity documentation also to word and then network diagram in pdf DWG DXF in AutoCAD format so you can work further if you want to edit your single line diagram further you have the option to do it in AutoCAD then and then the exchange file so this is a file for the module for which you have to pay for it's a module when you want to plan your Civicon cabinets 
And as I said, for that one you have to pay, but since I don't use Sivacons, I don't really need this kind of file. As said, for the power distribution, for the dimensioning of everything, this software is completely free of charge. Paper size, cables, logo and so on. You can set up your own logo, which is a great thing over here. One more thing with the output documentation. So when you output your single eye diagrams, you're not going to have only this view, this representation, but also this is with the device parameters. Then you also have this one, load flow, this kind of representation, then the show circuit currents at the level of the cabinet, on the entrance, and then on the final circuits. So on this motor, you're gonna have two and a half kilo ampere maximum short circuit current on the motor itself, and then energy report, so the power and the components, and then the blank one. This one would be probably useful for you in the AutoCAD if you want to edit the circuits further. So without any parameters, only the graphical lines. Output documentation, as I said, you get all of these documents, all of these files, and it's incredibly useful. So everything you can think of to output from a project where you dimension, dimension something, you'll find in those documents over here. That's about it about this software. As I said, I find it very useful. I also tried, as I said, software for all the other manufacturers, from the ABB, from Eaton, from Schneider Electric. This one is by far the best one solution. So no bugs, no problems, really user-friendly and very useful. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about uh, Retail term, so for the heat loss calculations and for the dimensioning of the climate control system for electrical enclosures. Now let me say some things about this software I use on some of my projects. It's called Retail Therm. I use this version 6.3. And the first thing I will do is to change the language to English. So the language support is not bad, you have a lot of languages available. And also like CMR design, it's a software free of charge and it's really useful. So on every project when you have, for example, when you have devices which generate heat inside cabinet, you should definitely conduct your heat loss calculations and dimension your climate control system or at least check how much heat is going to be generated inside the cabinet to decide whether you need the fan or even air conditioning. So that's something you should do. And as I said, some of my clients like Volkswagen even demand that I hand over the report of the local calculation as an integral part of the project documentation. It's a basic software with not a lot of functions, but it definitely is useful for the things it does. Let's calculate enclosure climate control and edit existing projects. So our, these are the projects I have created so far. Let's add a new project. So create a new project. You can add some data over here. Maximum external temperature, so that the, the temperature that is expected to be in the surrounding area where you're gonna install your cabinet. Maximum internal temperature, it means the temperature that shouldn't be exceeded within your cabinet. So that's something that depends, this temperature depends, this parameter depends either on the devices you plan to install your cabinet 
if you remember for the soft starters on the project of the industrial refrigeration system I mentioned in the previous lectures, I couldn't go above 40 degrees Celsius since those soft starters shouldn't work at a higher temperature than 40 degrees Celsius. And then the voltage, you can choose between different voltages, frequency, including 230 volts. So we, you define the basic data, the main data. Let's go further. You define your enclosure. Let's select one. Something like this. The position, the installation. We're going to say it's going to be something like this, just for our example. Do you wish to add heat loss to this new enclosure? We're going to say yes. Now we have three options, either direct input. So maybe you have this info, how many watts is going to be generated as a power loss within your enclosure. Or if you have an existing enclosure and you measured the temperature inside the cabinet. So let's say it's going to be like 76 degrees without fans and air conditioning and the maximum external temperature is going to be really hot let's say like 38 degrees in the room and you're going to install this cabinet or you can add devices so you have from these different manufacturers or you could add a heat loss over here Either you choose from the existing devices, the heat loss parameter, or you could define your own. So you are completely flexible over here. The software has this option. You can input any data you need. The heat loss, once again, we're gonna say measure temperature. So 38 in the room and in the cabinet, it's gonna be 76 degrees. So we measure that in the cabinet, 76 degrees Celsius without climate control system. So no fans, no air conditioning. Also, if you want to work in, you have this option. I work in the SI unit since I work in Europe, but if you work in the United States or Canada, I don't know, you can also work with the imperial units let's click on that one to see what we get so in this case you're going to have imperial units for every data you need to input in your calculations all over the software we're going to stick to the si units external internal let's say accept so now the program calculated for this enclosure, we're going to have 1,150 watts of heat load, power loss, power dissipation, heat dissipation, however you want to call it. And let's go further. You're just going through the tabs. Now, the green ones are the solutions which are acceptable. So we need to have some sort of air conditioning. So a fan is not an acceptable solution over here since let's go back to project data maximum internal temperature is lower than the maximum external what we said is going to be 38 degrees in the calculation over here measure temperature close let's go back to calculation and we're gonna say a cooling unit now we have some solutions which are acceptable on the wall or on the roof of the cabinet you can choose them when you're done with this one you go to accessories if you want to add some accessories for this one and then to summary and you can export this report you get over here 
to various formats, various documents, and you're done with your calculation. As I said, it's a very useful software, free of charge, and some of the customers even demand that I do these calculations and put them in the project documentation. That's it for this software. In the next one, we're going to talk a little bit about ePlan Electric P8. Now, a little bit about the king of all the software I use on my projects when I design industrial automation systems. This software is called ePlan Electric P8. And it's so massive, it has so many functions, so many sections that I'm just going to concentrate on those crucial main sections in this software, in this program to show you the possibilities this program offers to you. So, you can create a project and then work according to IEC standard or if you prefer you could work also according to NFPA or some other standards. And then the simpler representation within your circuit diagram is going to be according to the standard you use in your project. The second thing, the reports, everything is automatically generated starting from your schematics, your cross references from the lines, from the auxiliary contacts. You can number all the devices automatically. Then the reports, starting from title page, table of contents, structure identify overview, and then cable overview, terminal diagrams, parts list, summarized parts list. You have about, let's see how many, Something like 40 different kind of reports you could generate automatically based on the info on the circuit diagrams you created within your ePlan project. So that's about circuit diagrams. You of course can also assign different parts to your elements and then generate report only for parts, so a parts list, something that is useful for your panel builder who has to order all the material, the parts and everything. Then 2D panel layout. You can create 2D panel layouts in your project to represent graphically all the things you draw here in the circuit diagram section. Another thing regarding panel layout, you can also draw panel layouts in 3D layout space if you have this add-on called ePlan Pro Panel. Let's see how this looks like. Something like this. So you import files, 3D macros, from manufacturers and just build your panel. The possibilities are endless. Those are in general the main sanctions and things ePlan offers to you. I use this software since 2010 and I've never ever considered using any other software, any other program to do this kind of job.